And so first and foremost, I needed to be able to trust Hoxie. And that can be uh, 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 daunting when it's um, effectively a person's first movie. Call's a good man, why? I ain't him. Stop fretting about it. You know I saw what's in the back of that closet. I've done things I wish I could take back. I best go look for the rider. All right. Jim Alexander here with Real Talker, Tim Blake Nelson, Potsy. Guys looking fashionable, great backgrounds. <laughs> You're ready for, for this day of, uh, of interviews. Uh, sometimes it's a struggle. <laughs> yeah, I went, I went with basic for my back. <laughs> yes, I <laughs> like that. Very... <laughs> so. You know, Patsy, I'm going to start with you. I got I to tell you, thank you for, for bringing this national treasure, Tim, Tim Blake Nelson, into a leading role to carry a film because this man has been long overdue. He's had so many terrific supporting roles, and but never in a sense carried a movie. I got to see him like he did in this one. Uh, was this your immediate kind of choice from the start? To, I'm sure you've been a fan of his work. Oh, uh, I mean... I've, I've told Tim before, I, you know, and we, you know, Tim came to our house for Thanksgiving while we were shooting. So, and my wife told him, you know, Holes was one of her favorites. And so, hmm. you know, Tim has been, we've been a fan of his forever. And he just has, I don't know, Tim is the most professional, studied, thoughtful actor I've ever had the pleasure of working with. And I'm just a huge fan of his. So, so yeah, I don't, I don't know. How, I mean, this wouldn't be the same movie with anyone else. There's no way. I agree. Tim, you know, you've, you've, like I mentioned, you've been in so many films and supporting roles. You've even done the genre too. Was it different for you uh, to kind of lead a film and know it even on screen and off screen too, that, you know, you have uh, everyone kind of leans on you differently when you, when you're the face of a film, um, was this a different sort of experience for you or it was just kind of another day at the office. Uh, I'm, I'm curious your take on kind of leading this film in a way. Well, I, I guess um, I guess a little bit of both, and I think especially when you're playing a lead role, you have to make sure that it's the director who's leading the film. And so, first and foremost, I needed to be able to trust Poxy, and that can be uh, 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 daunting when it's. Um, effectively a person's first movie. Potsy had directed and created a television show and right. he directed a comic feature, but this was his first serious Western. But meeting Potsy via Zoom alongside his producer, um, Shannon Houchins, I was confident in two things. One, that Potsy had a very strong vision for what he wanted to do and that he would he would lead in a benignly relentless way to get what he, he wanted. Um, and I could trust that. And also that he had a, a producer who was going to support his vision. And once I knew that, it was really about playing the role in a way that supported Hoxie's vision. Um, which became our shared vision because he asked me to come along and, and produce with him. But even in that respect, I, I laid down as a condition, yes, I'll work on this also as a producer, so long as you always have the last word. Hmm. And, um, and Potsy did. And the result is a really wonderful film in which ultimately... I'm very proud of my work and I put everything I had into it, but it's in service of a story Potsy is telling. You know, Potsy, one casting choice here to have Trace Atkins and Stephen Dorff. These are guys I kind of imagine being in this genre and this film too, especially Trace over the years. He's kind of been a, a, several sort of uh, 
Western type of films. Uh, how important was it to you to surround Tim in a sense where people as a viewer that I'd recognize, oh, oh yeah, these guys belong in this film. This makes sense. You know, these are kind of tough guys or in a sense imposing guys and Steven Dorff too. You just think of him kind of a badass, you know, whenever you do. Um, how early was that a decision that you kind of were on board with to, to surround them with such phenomenal actors, but also people you kind of envisioned doing this sort of genre and film? It's I guess it's funny because the you know Trace Atkins is such a noticeable he's such a recognizable face, mm -hmm. um, but I, I think that was the one piece that I wanted to hide him as much as possible because you know Trace has played tough Trey he's a tough guy because he's such an imposing figure, All right? Um, so so that you know from the beginning it was like how do we hide Trace Atkins? So when you watch this you don't go oh that's Trace Atkins you say oh that's just a character. Um, so, you know, it was, we had him in a wig and we shaved his, his usually pointy goatee down to, you know, just scruff. And so he really became a more of a, a docile, good old country boy than the normal tough guy, Trace Atkins that you, you know, that you're used to seeing on, on screen. Um, and so, and then, you know, with Stephen Dorff, it, it's really, you know, Stephen has a, he has such a face and a voice for playing the bad guy. Um, so, you know, that that was a pretty easy, easy cast, you know, just picturing him in that role. Um, you know, and when I talked to Stephen the first time, he said he'd never played, he'd never done a Western, he always wanted to. So this was, you know, it was just an easy fit with him. Um, mm -hmm. But I think, you know, it's, it, it really is Tim. Tim did such an amazing job with this character and finding, finding, you know, bringing old Henry to life. And as he would say on set, you know, it, it was hard to, his biggest struggle was just restraining himself, not speaking for you, Tim, but he said, uh, you know, having to restrain himself from going too far or, or, you know, doing things he'd done in other movies in a bigger way, this was, this was a, a harder role in a way because of that restraint. And so, you know, it was just, it was a joy to work with him and, and really find that character in there from, you know, Tim would come to say, he's like, he's like, you know, I want to, I want to have this prosthetic eye and I want these teeth. And I was like, all right, let's let's look at these things. So we had David Atherton, who's an amazing effects guy. He, you know, suited Tim up, and and it was just every step of the way it would just further bring that character to life. And I, I think you know, uh, Tim did an amazing job. He he definitely I, like you know he carried this film. It was amazing. So. You know, I want to kind of end off by getting perspectives from both of you. Uh, Patsy, you, you obviously developed, seems like, a friendship with Tim, but what's something that surprised you about him as a person and that you really appreciate ab about him, not only as a performer, because we kind of get to see that, but uh, Tim as the person that you've gotten to know on this project? Uh, I mean, that's easy. You know, from, from the beginning, Tim came on and, and, you know, the first month before he ever signed his contract to you know, saying he'd do it. We spent a good hour or two on the phone every day. Um, and Tim, Tim's very straightforward. You know, he, he loves to joke. He loves to have a good time, but he's very straightforward. So there was a moment where he asked me, you know, we were talking about Westerns and, and kind of our influences. And he asked me if I'd seen McCabe and Miss Miller. And I said, no. Mm. Um, and Tim, Tim was like, all right, I'm going to hang up. Call me when you've seen it. And so it was, <laughs> it was like, and so of course I rushed out, you know, downstairs, I rented it, watched it right away. Cause I, you know, I wanted to let him know that I was willing to learn everything I could to, to about this genre, you know, and things I didn't know about the genre and really push to make the best Western. But, um, you know, to on set, you know, Tim never went to his trailer. He would sit there, he, he would do a scene and then he would stay nearby and tell stories and, and tell jokes in between. And he would journal in his journal. And I, I still want to get a hold of that journal one day and see what he's written in there. But uh, he, just, he wanted to, he wanted to be around the crew and around everybody and, and just a part of it and, and feel the energy. And that, I think that's what makes him such a, a fun person to be around because he, he does truly enjoy everyone, you know, the experience of making a movie and, and, uh, you know, and that, that's what, that's what I enjoy. You know, I enjoyed, it's just, it's a, it's a process and it's a family. And yeah. I think Tim really enjoys being a part of that. Tim, what's your take kind of on Potsy as not only as a filmmaker, but as a person that kind of drew you into him and, and wanted you to collaborate with him? Potsy is just a manifestly decent human being. Uh, in addition to being a really talented director, he's just a great guy and, and he'll be a friend for the rest of my life. 
Well, that's you see when you can make uh, connections like that, Patsy. I think that's that's a that's a lot more takeaway sometimes than a film. You know, a, a lifelong you know, we, friendship. We still talk a couple times a week. He'll I get a text that says, "What's up, pimp?" <laughs> so, <laughs> hey, uh, old Henry Chu. Let's get the cat in the background in it. <laughs> How about that for a oh, collab? Was that yeah, oh, he was just photo bombing uh, back and forth. So. <laughs> it was a fun takeaway. Awesome. But awesome job, guys. Seriously, I really enjoyed uh, the film. I thought, Potsy, for I, I've seen your series before, but uh, I think there's a new realm for you. And I think you did a phenomenal job as this sort of a first time in this genre and just a, you know, in, in a feature like this. And uh, I'm glad you cast him as a lead because I've been a long time a fan of his. And hopefully you two collaborate again. That'd be amazing to see. Yes, sir. Oh, for sure. Yeah. Nice. Thank you, guys. You. Yeah, good talking to you. <laughs> Appreciate your time. Thanks. Thanks a lot. Bye-bye.